The man that we're going to talk about today, his name is Al Qadi Abu Bakr Al Baqillani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, from Baghdad, the great judge of Baghdad in Iraq. In the year 1000, Al Qadi Abu Bakr Al Baqillani was invited to a debate. He was invited to meet with the Byzantines and to meet with some of the Roman monks and the priests and to debate with them about Islam versus Christianity. And subhanAllah, the emperor recognized that Al Qadi Abu Bakr al Baqillani, this isn't a man that's going to come in and bow because it was known that the Muslims, they don't bow. And he realized that if he comes in and he doesn't bow, then that's going to give the rest of the people in the kingdom an opportunity or an opening to say, if the Muslim guy didn't bow, then we don't have to bow. So he said, we've got to find a way to make him bow. So he actually constructed this structure so that whenever he walks in, he'd have to duck in to get in to meet with the emperor of Rome. So he'd basically bow involuntarily as he's walking in to meet with him. So Al Qadi Abu Bakr al Baqillani, he shows up to this palace and he sees this structure and he, and he catches it right away. He was a brilliant man. He recognizes right away what the emperor was trying to do. So he actually turned around and he entered in backwards <laughs> so that he could show him that, you know what, I'm not going to fall for this. And he walks in and right away this started off in a very unpleasant way, right? But they greeted him and, and uh, they told him to have a seat. And he met with various priests and various monks. And suddenly Abu Bakr al-Baqillani, as he was sitting there, some of the priests started to walk in with candles and they had the Bible and they had, they had this really lavish display as the head priest. Now the narration says the head priest, Allah knows best, it could be the Pope of the time or what it may be, but the head priest walks in. And this is the man that Abu Bakr al-Baqillani is going to debate with. So I want you to imagine the scene. Here you have the Muslim guy that came from far away and he's sitting down and you basically got an entrance, like when a boxer comes in or a wrestler comes in, right? And he's going to debate with this man. So he walks in and Abu Bakr al-Baqillani is sitting there and he's completely unimpressed by this display and by his theme song or whatever it may be. And as he walks in, he says to him, as he greets him, he says, so how are the wife and the kids doing? <laughs> and when he says, how are the wife and the kids doing? Everyone just blew up. Everyone was like, wait, what did you just say? And it just caused this entire ruckus in the palace. Like, how dare you say that the man has a wife and kids? Don't you recognize that our priests are above that and that this man is above that? How could you say that he has a wife and kids? And he responds brilliantly. He says, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this is in Surah Maryam, Verse 88, And they say that the Most Merciful has taken for Himself a son. You've done an atrocious thing. You've brought forth an atrocious claim. Allah says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the heavens almost rupture therefrom and the earth splits open and the mountains collapse in devastation. That they dare attribute to the most merciful a son. He said, SubhanAllah, you guys are up in arms. This whole ruckus took place because I asked one of the priests about his wife and kids, but you're willing to attribute that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So obviously the debate went sour from that moment. Abu Bakr al Baqillani had the upper hand. And when that happened, one of them chimed in and he wanted to basically insult the Muslims. So he said to him, Tell us what happened to the wife of the Prophet وسلم, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad that committed adultery. And he meant by that Aisha radiallahu anha. So he brought forth the slander against the Aisha. And listen to what Abu Bakr al-Baqillani said. He said that Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was slandered and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala absolved her. The same way that Maryam alayhi salam was slandered, Mary was slandered. And Allah absolved her of that slander. Except that Maryam alayhi salam had a child and Allah still absolved her. Aisha had no child. So if you're going to say that there is no way that Allah could absolve a woman from above the seven heavens, then what do you say about Maryam alayhi salam? So he said, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared the purity of both of these great women. And when he said that, they realized there is no way to beat this man in a debate. So the emperor, he summoned uh, his priest and he said, you know what, give the man a bunch of bags of gold, tell him to go back to Iraq and never come back. So Abu Bakr al-Baqillani, he walks out of the palace. He's got these bags of gold and he goes back to Baghdad and he drops this into Bayt al-Mad, into the treasury. And SubhanAllah, we find from that again, the lesson that we take from that is that truly SubhanAllah, to attribute a wife or, or partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of the most grievous things. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that the earth almost splits, the skies almost split, that the mountains are devastated. 
by someone attributing a child or attributing a wife to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pure from all of that. And there is no one, as Allah says in the hadith Qudsi, that there is no one more deserving of not having a partner attributed to him than me. No one more deserving than me. 